stays only a little while, then it is gone again. But it's getting stronger and brighter each day. come back to us again. I like to hear my children singing. It means that life goes well in our land. Our hunt fails and we are hungry. But in the good years, with the hot spring sun beating down on the land and on the frozen sea, my people are happy. <laughs> We like our land, and especially we like the sea. Most of the land is very rocky. In some places it is covered with ice all the time. But the sea is our friend. It joins my camp to the camps of all my neighbors. Over its ice, we can go where we please as we hunt out food. The polar bear, the walrus, and the seal. All winter, the seals live under the thick ice. Soon after the sun returns, we put nets down to catch them as they swim along near the shore. My father says this crack has always been here in the spring. But it was only last year that we started setting a net. We buy the rope from the trader, but we make the net ourselves. This is our way. In our land, everything has a use, even the sea ice. This piece makes a good surface anchor for our net to keep it from sinking. If we used a big stone instead, the sun would make it very hot. The stone would melt its way right down through the ice and we might lose the net. Sometimes we get a lot of seals from our net and we need them. It has been said that if the seals were to leave our land, we would die off and be no more. This is so. All during the time of sunlight, we must store up seals in our caches. The heavy stones keep the meat safe from foxes and bears. Besides giving us meat for ourselves and our dogs, seals give us skins for boots and clothing and oil from their fat to heat our houses and cook our food. In April, with the hot sun eating up the snow on the rocks, we can do much of our work outside. The drying of the sealskin line the scraping of skins. But also, spring is our holiday time. Do you pay <laughs> As the sun beats down on our campsite, it softens the snow which has almost buried our little house. The house will soon get very damp. My wife says we must look for a new place to stay. We will not return here until the night begins again after the summer rains and sun have washed the ground clean. While I look after the loading, 
Fanilo, my eldest son, harnesses up the dogs. I'm proud of my dogs. Shuglu, Ungnaoya, Miali. They are all big fellows and all rascals. I have 15 dogs in my team. I need a lot of dogs to pull my big sled. For when we move, we take all our belongings with us, even our boat. And in the spring, we always have to count on having an extra passenger or two. A biscuit helps fill up the big stomachs of little Mosisi and Paulusi. For loading takes time and we never hurry unless we have good reason. Then everyone helps to pull the sled forward to the edge of the sea ice where Panelo will hitch up the dogs. Panelo is a good boy. He learns quickly and already he is a big help to me. I am happy this is so. Someday he will be a good hunter and trapper. Maybe as good as his father. <laughs> Each dog on my team has its own harness and trace made of sealskin. We fasten all the traces to the sled by toggles which my father carves from walrus or narwhal tusks. With separate traces the dogs can choose their own path over the snow and I can see which ones are working and which are not. In April, the snow on the sea ice is still hard and our big sled pulls easily. But this will change. The hot sun will soften the snow. It will get wet and heavy, then melt into pools of water. For our spring camps, we like to find a nice gravel beach that has been blown clear of snow. Here we can pitch our tents away from the wet and dampness to come. In May, we hear a new sound in our land. The snow goose has come back to nest. And in the open waters at the edge of the land fast ice, the mers swim and feed. When the snow is clear of the rocky ledges, the mers settle down. The birds have always nested on these cliffs in the spring and summer. My father, his father, and his father before him have all journeyed here to gather the eggs and eat the birds. Sun beats down night and day. 
when it is not hidden by the clouds and the land soaks up its heat. First, the snow softens and melts. Our dogs swelter beneath their heavy winter coats and we have to make boots of sealskin to keep their feet from being cut by the crystals of the melting sea ice. Then the rains come. Day after day, the soft, warm rain beats down and we see the mosses and lichens beginning to appear. We hear another new sound, the little streams running over the rocks and under the snow. And in the puddles among the rocks, our first spring flowers are born. On the sea, the ice stays hard, but the snow melts, covering the ice with pools of water. From under the ice where they have lived all winter, the seals come out to bask in the hot sun. All winter, the seal keeps open many holes in the thick ice. At the top, each hole is just big enough for him to stick his nose out of the water to breathe. When the sun melts the snow from the top of the hole, he scrapes the ice with his teeth and the sharp claws of his front flippers, making the hole large enough so that he can climb out onto the ice. But our seal is careful. Before coming out onto the ice, he will lie quietly in his hole just the tip of his nose above the water. He is breathing, casting about for any strange smell. If all seems clear, he will raise his head out of the water and take a quick look around. He must always be on the lookout for Nanook the bear, his most deadly enemy. Usually he will come up two or three times before finally coming out onto the ice. A few times I have seen young seal come up in one of the shallow pools near the shore. This little one is curious. He sets out to explore the ice. If he can't find the hole again, he won't be alive very long. Out of the water he is helpless. But his curiosity soon leaves him. Away from the water, he gets uneasy. This sends him scurrying back to his hole and down into the safety of the sea. Seal's biggest enemy is, uh, me.
When the seal sleeps on the ice, I stalk him. My white screen looks like a piece of ice to him. At first, I just walk forward. But when I get close, I must be very careful. The seal sleeps in short naps, then lifts his head to look around. I will move forward while he sleeps and crouch behind my screen when he looks around. And I must go up to the wind, for a seal can smell danger from a long way off. Panelo always likes to hunt. Soon he will be a hunter. This is our daily task. For my life and the lives of all my family depend on my bringing home our meat. <laughs> supper is lying at your feet. My wife will be happy tonight, for this is my first young seal this year. The meat will be tender and good. seal makes very good boot tops. Panelo's mother will make him a new pair of boots from this one. But I suppose I'll have to get along with my old ones. But one seal is not enough. Our hunt goes on. Each day at my camp, the dogs and ourselves eat three seal. And we must put some aside to cover the bad days when we cannot hunt and to fill our caches with next winter's meat. In June, our night is still as day. Udlaka Kunialo, as we say. The day is always here. The snow is almost gone from the land now, but the sea remains covered with ice. Only in the deep gullies do the snowdrifts cling to the land. But they seem to shrink before your eyes, running away to the sea. In July, we still have ice on the sea. But now it is rotten, full of holes and cracks. It is no longer our trail yet it stops us from using our boats. The ice begins to move with wind and tide. The big flows break up into smaller ones, always on the move, first one way, then the other. One
one day the ice moves out into the open sea. Much loose ice stays behind in the deep bays. The summer storms build up waves which pound the ice, grinding it to pieces or carving it into odd shapes as we carve the ivory whale tusks with our knives. August, the midnight sun still shines over our land. The snow has gone, and there is only a little ice on the sea. Everyone at my camp works hard, and everyone has a job to do. My wife, Kudlik, dries our socks and sealskin boots and keeps them in good repair. When drying, the bottoms of the boots harden and Kudlik will have to soften them before they can be worn again. My mother, Ngnaoya, dries and repairs the seal skins that we need for our boots and mitts. Drying of skins cannot be done during the dark months of winter. There is no sunlight. As our boot soles and mitts wear out quickly, many skins will be needed over the coming year. My mother tells me that when I was a little boy, I used to lose my mitts and come home crying for more. In one winter, she made 15 pairs just for me. My father, Akomalik, no longer hunts. He is an old man now. He's hard at the camp. He scrapes and cleans the sealskin lines we need for dog traces and harpoon lines. In summer, we still hunt the seal from our kayaks and canoes. But we get other food as well. Char, the big fish of the sea. <laughs> I go after bigger things, the whales that come into the bays to feed during the summer. I shot this young white whale. White whales are gray when young, but as they grow older, they turn white. When full grown, they can be as long as 15 feet. We hunt the narwhal too. They are about the same size as the white whale, but black and white on the back, white underneath. The male narwhal has a long tusk which we prize for its ivory. My father says the narwhal uses this tusk to spear big fish, but he has never seen them do it. I have never seen it, but the tusk must be used as it is always well polished near the tip. The tusk grows long. Many big ones are seven or eight feet. The narwhal breathes on the surface through a blowhole in the top of its head. They can swim as fast as we can paddle our kayaks, driving forward by thrusts of the big tail. 
We don't eat the meat. That goes to the dogs. We eat the muktuk, the thick layer of skin. I like muktuk better than anything else. Most Eskimos do, and Kudlu is no exception. In our summer camps, when it is daylight all the time, there is no darkness to stop our daily work. We can hunt at any time of the day or night. We have no set times for eating or sleeping. We eat when we are hungry, go to bed when we are tired. But always the first thing we do on awakening is to climb the hill back of the camp and search the sea with our telescopes, looking for whales. For we are Eskimo. Our life is the hunt. father may have stiff knees, but his eyes are still good. He has seen something in the sea. It looks like a whale, he says. And it is. More than one, two, three, four white whales feeding over a reef. And close behind, narwhals. They have come to the surface to breathe before going down again to feed. We watch them through our telescopes, making sure of the direction in which they are feeding. Once we are sure, we waste no time getting ready for the chase. We hunt the narwhal from our canvas-covered kayaks, using harpoons for the killing. An inflated sealskin is attached to one end of a long sealskin line and will act as a drag on the narwhal once it has been harpooned. The other end of the line is attached to an ivory harpoon head, which is fastened to a throwing handle. The long line is coiled up on the foredeck. Attached to the float is a disc of sealskin to slow down the whale once the harpoon has struck. Kudlu and I take our rifles along but we will probably not need them. We will use only our two harpoons, the one for attaching the float to the whale, the other for killing. Kichualik and the boys follow well behind in the dory. They will watch our kayaks from a distance. As soon as they see the float gone from the back deck of a kayak, they will come up for well, that will mean a harpoon is in a whale. Across the inlet, well ahead of the place we saw the narwhal as they moved along the shore, we wait for them. Somewhere near here, they must come up to breathe. but the slap of water on our kayak sends them down again. Now the chase begins. They will have to come up again soon, for they didn't have much time to breathe. We keep close to the shore, hoping the sound of our paddles will keep them in the shallow water where they cannot dive and escape. escape. They are up again, but too far ahead.
ahead of us. Confused by the sounds, we lie quietly, breathing on the surface, not knowing what to do. Then, as the splash of our paddles draws closer, they are off again. Rolling over on their backs, they begin to swim for their lives. We are right after them, excitement lending speed to our paddles. For when a whale rolls over and comes up, we have only a split second to throw the harpoon into his back. Here he comes. I am ready for him. beneath its skin, the drag of the float pulls the whale to the surface. Now we must finish him using our steel-tipped killing harpoon, always trying for a vital spot. have completed their work. This winter we shall not be hungry. We have been given strength and courage to secure our meat. For this we give thanks. In September, the storms sweep over our sea. The sun goes away at night now, and ice forms on the lakes. Ice is forming on the sea, each day reaching further out into the open waters of the bay, growing thicker and thicker with every rising tide. And with the stinging cold of the October blizzards, our long day is drawing to a close. Our daylight is dying. Each day the sun comes up a little later, sets a little earlier. over our land. Tomorrow, it will set and be gone. But we don't mind. Our meat cats are full.